Modern Physics, Part 1. A quick review of problem solving, writing equations and drawing graphs from lab data on the photoelectric effect. So I've cheated a little bit. This is a computer drawing graph, but I don't have the best fit line data on it. I'm going to calculate that myself. So we have the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons and the frequency graphed here. And we're going to try and find the threshold frequency of the metal surface, write the equation for the graph, and determine the work function for the metal surface. Threshold frequency is easy. It's just the threshold where you start actually making electrons. So the kinetic energy is greater than zero, so it's where the line crosses the zero axes, um, and that's it. So around this graph, it's around 5.98 or 5.8 times 10 to the 14th hertz. So I can go ahead and write that information down up at the top, 5.8 times 10 to the 14th hertz. Now I have to start worrying about that work function and the equation for the graph. This is going to be a little trickier, but not a lot. Since I'm going to find my slope manually, I need to find two points. Um, and so I'm going to grab a ruler and line it up with one point that crosses a line that makes it easier to read. I'm going to go ahead and draw a line on my graph to make it easier for me to read. Um, so I've got my horizontal line and now I'm going to draw a vertical line so I can find out where that point is on the x and y axes. I'm just doing this to make it easy to read my x and y axes because it's not a very clear graph. That's my first point and now I'm going to pick another point again hopefully where it crosses a crosshair and I'm going to go ahead and draw my um, horizontal line and a vertical line. It's important when you're doing lab data that you do not pick a data point necessarily, but rather you pick two points to find your slope that are on the best fit line, not necessarily data points. So reading where those red lines cross the axes, for my second data point, x2 is equal to 1.79 times 10 to 15 hertz, y2 is 4 electron volts. My first data point, x1 is 1 times 10 to the 15 hertz, and y2 one is equal to 1.45 electron volts. So I've written down all the data. Now I can use it to find the slope. To find slope, I'm going to need two data points, which I've already picked out. I'm just going to mark them again. I've got the point 1 and point 2. Um, the, it's a straight line on my graph, so it's going to be the general form of y equals mx plus b. Slope is rise over run, or y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. I've got those numbers written down, so now it's just a matter of substituting them in and solving it. Plugging them in, I've got 4 minus 1.45 electron volts over 1.79 minus 1 times 10 to the 15th hertz. Dividing it all out, I get the slope is 3.3 times 10 to the negative 15th electron volt times seconds. Electron volt seconds, how did I get that kind of a unit? Let's take a look at the units. So I have electron volts over hertz, but a hertz is 1 over a second. So that means I have electron volts over 1 over a second. But 1 over a second, that's a compound fraction. Nobody likes fractions, let alone compound fractions. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply the top and the bottom by seconds. The seconds will cancel out in the bottom, and I'm left with, voila, electron volts times seconds. So again, my slope is 3.23 times 10 to the negative 15th electron volt per seconds. Remember that general form is y equals mx plus b. What is y? y is the variable on the y-axis, but on my y-axis I have kinetic energy, so I substitute ke for y. m I already have solved for, so I'm going to put in the number and the units for my slope and then x. What is x? Well, x is what is on the x-axis. And on the x-axis, I have frequency, so I'm going to put frequency for x, and then I have b, the y-intercept, which I don't know. To find b, I'm going to need a specific data point. So I'm going to use one I already got, the first data point that I used to calculate the slope. Once I have that value down, I'm going to take the general form y equals mx plus b, rearrange it to solve for b, and I get b equals y minus mx. 
So I plug into that rearranged equation my value for y and my value for x and the value for slope. And I get b is equal to 1.45 electron volts minus the slope times the uh, 1 times 10 to the 15th hertz. Quick look at units again. I have electron volts times seconds times hertz, but that gives me electron volts times seconds times 1 over seconds, or just plain electron volts. So my second term, mx, is up, ends up being just electron volts for that term's units. And I get b is equal to negative 1.78 electron volts. Starting with a clean slate, the formula for this particular line, for this particular lab, is Ke equals 3.23 times 10 to the negative 15th electron volts times seconds times the frequency minus 1.78 electron volts. Comparing that to the general photoelectric equation, Ke equals hf minus the work function, we see that the slope of our line is indeed h, or Planck's constant. And we can see that the y-intercept b, or negative 1.78 electron volts, is equal to the work function for that particular metal for that particular lab. Taking another look at the photoelectric effect equation, Ke, kinetic energy, is the excess energy of the released electrons, or the electrons got kicked out of the atom. Whereas HF, Planck's constant times the frequency of the photon, is the energy of the photon that it brings in to the atom. If I line up my ruler with the slope of this particular graph, and I draw another line that's parallel to that slope, at a different place on the graph, that will just be the line for a different metal. And I could draw another one. And the next one is also going to be parallel because the slope is Planck's constant. And Planck's constant is a constant. The slope is always the same in the photoelectric effect. That's what a constant means. So if you have different metals, they are just shifted to different places on that particular graph. Um, the one to the right has a higher threshold frequency. The one to the left has a lower threshold frequency. A higher threshold frequency means it also has a larger work function. It takes more energy to kick those electrons out of the atom. The lower threshold frequency means it has a lower work function. It takes less energy to kick those electrons out of their atom. That is the beauty of the graph of kinetic energy versus frequency in the photoelectric effect, and indeed the beauty of the photoelectric effect. Thank you for your time.